So first I would like to thank the organizers for the this very nice invitation and uh, for organizing also all this semester, trimester. So uh, today I will talk about a joint work uh, with uh, Erwan Fau and Evelyn Mio uh, that concerns uh, vortex filaments and uh, more particularly parallel vortex filaments in uh, case they are colliding. So what is a vortex filament? It is uh, a fluid where uh, 3D fluid where the vorticity is concentrated uh, along uh, uh, a curve in R3 and uh, of course uh, collisions and the reconnection of vortex filament is something uh, that happens uh, in turbulent fluids so it's a, an important phenomena and uh, but uh, of course it is very difficult to capture this kind of, uh, of uh, things mathematically however it is expected that one situation, which is rather simple to understand, uh, is uh, the case of uh, two almost parallel vortex filaments with uh, opposite uh, circulations. Uh, as it was uh, suggested by Crow's work in the 70s, so it is uh, the case, I mean, it is the situation that you can see actually in the sky if the weather is good. Uh, so you see the two, uh, the two, um, uh, how do you call it, trace uh, of the plane, uh, white trace in the sky. So these are vortex filaments with opposite circulations that propagate and eventually as times go by, they finally, uh, they finally reconnect and uh, well then start, uh, uh, start to doing a vortex ring and other things. Ah, uh, co contrails uh, aircraft uh, contrails. Yeah, actually, Crow's paper appears in uh, American Journal of uh, uh, Astronautic and uh, Aerodynamics or something like this, which is, of course is uh, is, a, is a journal very hard to to obtain for a mathematician. <laughs> However, this picture you can see it in the sky, and during your life, now that you have seen this talk, uh, you'll notice it at one point, and you'll think about this talk. Well, okay, so now uh, you want, uh, this is what happened in real life, uh, uh, now you want to transcribe it mathematically and of course uh, through, the, through the fluid mechanics equation this is something very difficult because the situation is very singular, however there is at my knowledge one uh, model that do this kind of uh, uh, modelization, so first uh, if you take a vortex filament, okay, let me call, so we are in R3, huh? let me call Z, the, the axis like this, okay, do a rotation, okay, and fix some height, a level, so you are in R2 here, okay, and then if you call uh, the coordinates in this plane, xj and uh, yj, then, uh, then if you complexify uh, the plane here, which you just say you are looking what what's happening for xj plus i yj, uh, uh, for one filament uh, j of circulation gamma j, uh, there is a system that is supposed to model this uh, evolution in fluids which is due to Klein, Maida and Damodaran and actually it was due prior to Zakharov precisely in the case where n equals 2 and you have so you have two uh, a pair of uh, vortex filament with opposite circulation so it's precisely the slide you had before the situation you had before so Zakharov was interested in uh, collision for uh, the anti what is called the anti-parallel uh, pair of uh, vortex filament and he derived also this model. Of course, Kleimaida and Damodaran really wrote a paper uh, generalized to several vortex filament 
and uh, derive in a more clear way this model. So let me say a few words about this model. So it is, uh, uh, lucky for us, the dispersion community, it is a Schrodinger system. So why a Schrodinger system? This uh, can be heuristically explained by the following two facts. Uh, you have uh, the linear Schrodinger part is supposed to model the interaction of the filament with itself. Actually, the linear Schrodinger uh, part is actually a very rough approximation of uh, the, the binormal flow uh, or vortex filament equation, which is a model for uh, the evolution of one single filament. And it's a model which is more complicated, actually is in link with uh, the cubic NLS. So in here, we one takes just the linear part. Actually, if you plug, uh, if you plug this ansatz epsilon, small, uh, small perturbation, into the binormal flow, you will obtain uh, as a first, uh, uh, I mean, uh, as a leading terminal in epsilon, you will obtain the linear Schrodinger equation. Okay, so this is for the interaction of one filament, the J's filament with itself. Uh, and then uh, you have uh, an extra term, which is supposed to model the interaction, the influence of other filaments to the J's filament. And uh, actually, this, uh, this kind of uh, interaction is precisely the one that appear in the case of uh, 2D fluids when you have point vortices. So it's the reduction to, to D. And uh, well, of course, uh, one thing that one could criticize for this model is that roughly, in some sense, the, the influence on the J's filament from the other filaments is supposed to come only at, highs, at fixed highs through the point uh, vortex system. In some sense, it's uh, kind of you don't see the interaction from the other heights from the other filaments. But I mean, this is the model, and uh, this is the only one we have. So of course, if you if you freeze uh, the the z variable, okay, you get uh, as a particular solution of uh, of this problem um, filaments that are located. that are located precisely precisely in uh, places in R2 evolving through the vortex point system. Okay, so these are particular solutions and we are studying perturbations, small perturbation near parallel at infinity of this particular solution of the system. Okay, so uh, of course I criticize uh, quite a lot, <laughs> more than maybe I should have done on the model. Uh, but as a counterpart, except the fact that, well, this is the, the only model we have, uh, uh, it has a very nice uh, mathematical structure, which probably means something physically. Okay, so it is, uh, it is a Hamiltonian and it has uh, several conserved quantities. Uh, in blue, I put what corresponds to the point vortex system uh, in 2D as uh, conservation laws. And I put it in here because, of course, you have to renormalize things because your system of Schrodinger uh, um, equation is not with the vanishing condition at infinity. You are near some, uh, some constant, depending on time. Okay, so uh, before uh, going further uh, with the um, filaments, I will say a few words about what is known uh, for the um, for the point vortex system because we shall work around straight parallel light located in the uh, point vortex system solution. So the first thing is that if uh, circulations are all positive, gamma j are all positive, then uh, the solution exists globally in time. In here, in this context, 
globally, global existence means we want to avoid collision. Collision means that at some time, uh, well, two uh, point uh, vortices just uh, bump one in into each other. And at the level of the filament, collisions will be, uh, there is a time and uh, a location such that, uh, such that, uh, well, your two filaments get, get one into another, like this. Okay, so uh, uh, I was saying that when circulation are all the same, the point vortices system evolves, but, but you never have collision for a simple fact that on the first line, uh, if uh, by any chance you have collision, meaning uh, xj getting too narrow to uh, an xk, uh, then your logarithm will uh, blow up. Uh, and then in order to have conservation, you have to have another pair at least uh, of j of k, such that uh, the difference goes to infinity. And then you have a, a contradiction for, from this part, which says that uh, all differences must be bounded uh, uniformly in time. So when you have a, a circulation of um, same sign, the, you have global existing, you don't have collision for the vortex point system. Well, in the particular case n equals 2, uh, you actually have that the distance is preserved between two uh, vortices. So uh, uh, the, the point translate uh, in the case of opposite circulation and rotate otherwise. And we, the case of uh, the aircraft at the beginning is the case where the, the two uh, point vortices uh, circulate, translate with uniform velocity depending on the initial distance, and we're looking for a collision of uh, perturbation of stride filament located in that uh, pair of vortices. Okay, things uh, even at the 2D level, start being more and more complicated, of course, when you increase the number of, uh, of, uh, of elements, of, uh, of points. So already when n equals 3, of course, if you take a uh, circulation that are not the same, uh, there is a simple example of um, uh, three points well chosen, such that uh, the whole picture will eventually collide uh, at uh, all the three will uh, will collide at the same point. The the the, the triangle will turn and shrink uh, uh, in the same time. Uh, and uh, the the last two things are uh, some special um, configuration, special solution of the point vortex system that I will use uh, in uh, in my talk. So it is known that uh, an equilibrium for the point vortex system is, uh, is the one uh, where you place, uh, you take the vertices of uh, n polygon, regular polygon, for instance, a hexagon, because <laughs> we're in France, okay, and you put the same circulation, and then it is known that this configuration, if you let it evolve to the vortex point system, it will just uh, rotate with some angular uh, velocity, which is determined by uh, the circulation and uh, the radius of the hexagon. And also, it is known that you can allow also to take the center, to put a vortex uh, point in the center of the configuration with other circulation than the one in here. And the angular velocity is computed again uh, in terms of uh, this, uh, this guy swoops. Okay, so uh, these are the results for the point vortex systems. And uh, now, uh, uh, maybe half, uh, half of my talk will be about what is known uh, about uh, the Klein Mind, uh, the Modern Zakharov system for uh, vortex filaments that we saw on the second slide. Uh, uh, and I will insist on what. Uh, was done before for two reasons. Uh, first, in some sense, to convince you that uh, it is a nice uh, system because uh, precisely we'll, uh, we'll see that it has many classes of particular solutions. 
and also because there are not so many results so we can list them uh, I hope uh, all of them if I'm not uh, skipping some uh, the reason there are so few results is uh, twofold one from the fluid uh, dynamics community uh, of course uh, if you are trying to work directly in, in the fluid uh, equation, the, the, the situation is too singular. Uh, we are working on this model, which can be criticized a lot, of course. Uh, but in any case, the situation from fluids is too, too singular. And on the other hand, uh, why this uh, hasn't been studied too much, uh, for instance, uh, for by the dispersion community, because eventually you end up with a Schrodinger system. It is that, uh, I mean, f at least from my point of view, of course many people didn't know about the model, but also uh, because it is not just a Schrodinger uh, usual system, it is a Schrodinger system with non-vanishing non condition at infinity, which means more gross pitaevsky equation. And if you follow what is happening already in the gross pitaevsky equation community, um, results concerning uh, really evolutionary in time solution, not just a stationary solution, started uh, just around uh, the years of 2000, I guess. Okay, so I think uh, that's uh, that are some explanation. So let me point out what are the um, what are the results we we have. So uh, first, the, the results obtained by people that uh, derive this model, when deriving this model, they conjecture that uh, precisely one have to look for collision in the case of uh, two uh, anti-parallel vortex filaments. So it was a conjecture. Um, and uh, also, they predicted that uh, in case of same circulations, one should have global existence or no collision. And only numerical computation were given to, to, to comfort these, uh, these conjectures. Okay, another result uh, due to Lyons and Maida is uh, concerning the statistical theory for uh, this uh, this configuration of uh, several clusters of, uh, of vortex filaments. But of course, uh, in their case, uh, they, uh, they took in account a very weak uh, formulation of the equation, which doesn't allow you to look precisely for, uh, for collisions. And then uh, uh, Koenig Ponce Vega looked at the system and they consider small perturbation in at the H1 level. They prove on one hand the local existence in for any initial configuration xj and any circulation and they manage to extend the local existence of course uh, basing themselves uh, on an energy argument. So the energy they use uh, is uh, the one here which is uh, the Hamiltonian plus uh, Actually, this part, in the case where the distance between any two point vortices is the same, uh, this part is precisely the separation momentum that I showed initially divided by this guy, or equivalently this guy in this, uh, in this setting. And then once you have this energy conserved, uh, you, you manage to um, to obtain a global existence result. Of course, uh, this, uh, this condition is very restrictive because if you have points in the plane that are uh, constrained to have the uh, same distance from one to each other, then of course you can have only two points, any two points, or uh, the vertices of uh, an equilateral triangle. Okay, uh, also there, uh, there are work that uh, have been done and are uh, currently done uh, uh, for uh, nearly parallel vortex filaments in the 3D <coughs> ginzburg landau equation and I think Roger will maybe tell us more about this tomorrow. Uh, 
and then uh, I had uh, several results with Evelyn Mio that I will uh, explain in the next slides. And the last but not the least, uh, there is a result recent of Garcia Spezia, Craig and Young, uh, which treated the um, time and space uh, solution periodics uh, close to the corrotating pair of filaments, so same circulation, not opposite. Okay, so uh, these are the known results, and so now I said that I will uh, recall uh, what uh, we have done with Evelina. So first, uh, since you have in mind that you are in a gross pitaevsky setting, you, you try to solve, uh, to see everything in terms of the energy instead of just H1. And because, of course, small H1 implies small energy, but not conversely. And also, uh, I mean, just the initial system is invariant under rotation. And if you take a rotation, the differences, of course, are just constant and are not in H1. And moreover, also in the spirit of Gropstadsky equation, the energy space contains uh, the, um, the gray soliton, meaning traveling uh, waves with the... Um, Finite energy, which are important solutions for the gross pitaevsky equation. And also in here, we'll see that we have something similar. And uh, the proof, of course, uh, uses a fixed point argument that allows the growth of the L2. So you, you don't stay small in H1, you allow the, the norm, L2 norm to grow in time. Of course, now if you want to pass from local to global existence, you need uh, the energy as before. And actually, uh, you have seen it in the slides before. It is conserved uh, for the equilateral triangle and for two points by uh, simply dividing some conserved quantity over the, the distance between the points. But actually, you can go further and uh, compute precisely how the energy, for instance, uh, if you take the square, uh, if you take uh, a square or a hexagon here, if you can express it in terms of the known conserved quantities and to see what is left uh, uh, aside and see if by some symmetry imposed to the system you don't have a, a conservation of the energy. And actually you realize that if you want this, you really have to impose very much symmetries either uh, I mean, no. uh, both on the, on the initial configuration of the XJ and also on the perturbation. And actually, this kind of uh, symmetry is preserved if you just, uh, at each height, you, at each height, let's say, we are at height Z, Z you just do multiplication by a complex number. So you delay it by the modulus of the complex number and you rotate everything by the argument of the complex number. So your hexagon will still be a hexagon at each uh, height, z. And uh, this is something which is preserved by the, by the system. And the ansatz is uh, the one there. So you multiply all the straight filament by the same thing uh, at uh, each height. And then actually you, you see that, uh, okay, the result is that you have global existence. You see that the equation, the system, all the system, initial system, reduce uh, to this uh, very nice equation. Uh, omega is, the, um, is the, the angular velocity of your uh, uh, regular uh, polygonal um, configuration of point vertices. And, uh, of course, it is a, a really a gross pitaevsky type equation. You have uh, a natural energy, and actually you realize that uh, the energy of the system is n times this, this energy. And then, of course, you, you extend to global existence. So now that we have this very nice equation, uh, which is gross pitaevsky like uh, you can, uh, you can derive many classes of solutions. And of course, the first of them, uh, you can obtain, uh, as is, is done in the gross pitaevsky setting, a little bit more complicated, but not too much, really not too much. Uh, you can obtain uh, traveling waves. 
And you have, actually, you can transcribe. Uh, I mean, you don't even transcribe, you just say it uh, works. I mean, it's very simple to transcribe everything from gross Pitaevsky. So uh, then this means uh, to view. So, uh, OK, let's say it is a square. So uh, this means that on each filament, you have something that is moving. And uh, this is one, uh, one thing. Uh, and also, if you use the Galilean invariance of the system, Schrodinger system, uh, initial Schrodinger system, you realize that you can, uh, you can transform uh, these things into four helices that I won't uh, draw in very nicely. <laughs> OK, whatever. Uh, no, this is not good. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, so on each helices, helix, helix, you have something, some, uh, some distortion that moves <coughs> along it. So why talking about helices? Because precisely uh, Hopfinger and Broant uh, wrote uh, a paper in Nature when <laughs> they showed that uh, you can uh, really, it is in superfluids, you can exhibit helices with, uh, with a distortion that, uh, that evolves like this. Uh, uh, for several vortex filaments. Uh, their uh, paper was to comfort uh, the fact that uh, Hazimoto's work on one filament uh, gives you uh, the picture when you have only one helix with a distortion moving on it. But actually, in the lab uh, experiment, you have several. So this fits with uh, what is seen, uh, at least in superfluids. OK, so then collision. Let's not forget uh, that the exciting point is uh, collision for vertex filaments. Well, in that case of uh, taking a regular XJ configuration and uh, symmetric uh, perturbations, so ending up with that gross pitaevsky equation, when the angular velocity of your initial configuration is 0, your gross pitaevsky equation is just the linear Schrodinger equation. And collision means that you want everybody to collapse, meaning that you are looking to, uh, to a place, uh, a time and a place where uh, phi tz equals 0. OK, so then you can just, uh, just uh, write uh, by hand a very simple uh, linear Schrodinger uh, uh, solution that uh, cancels at time zero and z uh, and uh, space height zero, which means that uh, your all your vortices collide. Of course, for having uh, the the angular velocity equal zero, uh, actually you have to put a point uh, in the middle of your polygonal uh, configuration. So this means that you have at least three point vortices. So you don't cover the the, the case of pairs of uh, filaments. So now we are getting back to the, the problem of uh, two filaments, which is uh, the aim of my talk. OK, so uh, Zakharov um, suggested that solution should be searched under some uh, that symmetry. OK, of course, along the antiparallel vortex filament. And then the, the problem reduces to this uh, Schrodinger equation with a quite exotic uh, term in here. And what you are interested in are solutions for this Schrodinger equation that at initial time don't vanish, and at finite time vanish at some point. So it is a quite uh, non-usual uh, non study of the Schrodinger equation. However, it is a pleasure to quote uh, paper by Merle and Zag, which is you know, not so quoted <laughs> in general, but we are the first one. yeah, yeah, we are the first one. <laughs> so they had the same type of problem. So quenching for the vortex connection in other um, situation, which ended up uh, with, a, with a problem of uh, this type of uh, finding uh, finding some solution vanishing at a point in finite time for the nonlinear uh, um, wave 
heat, heat, sorry, heat equation. And uh, actually, for uh, this purpose, we try to, to follow, of course, the thing, uh, the paper. <laughs> uh, but uh, there, there were some uh, major issues. So the, the idea in the paper is uh, to replace uh, your unknown function by one over your unknown function. So you are looking for a solution that uh, blow up at one point. Uh, uh, of course, in the case of the heat equation, there is another previous paper of uh, Merla and Zag that gives you uh, such a dispersive blow-up uh, wave uh, a heat. I'm so sorry, uh, heat uh, solution and that they manage then to put it as an ansatz in uh, their uh, their equation. In our case, uh, well, you you replace uh, psi one by one over f. Uh, uh, then you end up with a gross pitaevsky type again equation, nonlinear equation with some nasty term, derivative terms and everything. Well, you will need uh, uh, some object around which you want to do your, uh, your ansatz. Such an object, uh, you can find it now in the literature, is a paper by uh, Bona, uh, Ponce, Sparber, So and Sparber. Uh, so, gross pitaevsky sol solution that displays a uh, dispersive blow up at a point. But of course, the regularity is such that you don't manage, in our case, uh, to, to write an ansatz in uh, this equation transform with some derivative term. So, it doesn't work. So, we get back to Zakharov's work, which uh, said just this one can look uh, for a self similar solution with that conditions at infinity, so, straight line. And uh, of course, there is no proof in Zakharov's paper, and in uh, Maida and Bertozzi's book, it's put as a major uh, open problem to find such a similar solution. And that's what we have done with uh, uh, Ewan Fawe and Evelyn Mio. So, we constructed a first a self similar solution that, uh, that, uh, that will give you collisions of filament. So it is something like this. And of course, as times go to zero, they will uh, end up colliding, and at the collision time, it will be just uh, uh, across, uh, across lines. Of course, uh, you are not in the case you wanted initially because your, your filaments are bented at infinity, but then what we do is that we manage to unbend them because now we have the ansatz. The ansatz will be precisely the, the self-similar solution. And actually, a posteriori, this is a very natural thing. You are looking to some singularity uh, formation. Well, uh, you have lots of chances to find it uh, by using some self-similar feature. So we managed to find a self-similar solution for our model. Then we cut it. And we um, complete it to uh, an equation of the of uh, of the the initial system. So eventually, your solution is really like this. So you have collision in finite time uh, at one point. So I will say in the five minutes I have left, I will uh, left. Uh, we say some words about the proofs. Um, so, ah, oof. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You can do the same thing. Uh, so here it was for two vortex filaments. Actually, you can take the symmetric configuration uh, and then uh, write uh, a self-similar solution for the, that gross pitaevsky equation that governed the, the evolution. And then you will end up by uh, the same argument by constructing also uh, a configuration that will collide at, uh, at the middle in finite time. OK, so some words about the proof. Uh, so uh, for the self-similar profile, uh, you just look at the um, profile equation. You, you cut it in, two, I mean, you re rewrite uh, the unknown function v, you call it this, and then you have some equation in v where u you can express in, in terms 
of V, so you end up by doing a fixed point, which is not so complicated, in a space that allows you to control uh, the denominator. So it's, it's, it's not so, so complicated. So this is for, um, for the self-similar profile. You start from infinity and you just construct it. And uh, now for the, for, the, for the system for two uh, nearly parallel filaments, uh, well, you put these ansatz, as we said, uh, then you write uh, the equation for your reminder r. You want uh, that uh, this uh, little r won't ruin what's uh, happening at the collision time, meaning that, remember, that you want a collision, meaning that you don't have collision, before the collision, the expected collision time and collision at the expected time. And this is, is what you already have for the self-similar solution. Now, when you add uh, that little r, you don't want it to give you some uh, cancellation before. I mean, yeah, if you give, I mean, you, you, you don't, you want to keep uh, your uh, self-similar um, behavior, uh, oh yeah. Uh, leading with respect to, to little r. So for doing this, you have to impose that little r will go to zero faster than the self-similar profile, just this. Okay, so you have an equation for little r with some, uh, some terms, whatever, and then uh, you will do a fixed point as usual, decay uh, in, uh, in H1 with some rates of decay, and moreover, you will have to ensure yourself that locally at, uh, at zero, at the place you want to see uh, the collision, you are um, decaying to zero less uh, faster than the self-similar profile. Uh, at the, cons the constant of, uh, of decay will be uh, smaller. Okay, and uh, then of course this, this kind of things, uh, one can see it also has been done for instance in the case of uh, blow up at critical mass for uh, cubic NLS on two D domains by Bourdieu and Vetkov. You take the, the self-similar solution blowing up on R2, you cut it and then you, you construct a little reminder R that goes to zero. So it's, I mean, it's the natural thing to do. And then uh, you, for uh, treating the equation, for doing the fixed point, you just get point-wise estimates near zero and at infinity, and then also L2 and H1 estimates for the reminder terms in the equation of R, and then you just use three cards estimates and uh, some commutator with the localization for the L infinity estimates near zero. And uh, that's all. Okay, thank you for your attention. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so when you, you reconnect, uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, is it just one way, you think? Or? I don't know, there are, well, actually, if you look at uh, what is the solution at time zero, uh, okay, at time zero, you'll have, uh, and uh, in zero, you'll have uh, this guy is real, this is zero, okay? And uh, then actually you have several, depending on how you've chosen your, uh, your cutoff. Okay. Okay. At, at zero, the main order would be universal? Yeah, 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 that's for sure. But then the shape you have uh, several, uh, I mean, you, uh, yeah, you'll have, you'll have a corner, but then you'll have some, this, this part, I mean, is, no. yeah. But so, can you prove that you need self-similar solution? No, our self-similar solution are not unique, and actually, um, we can talk about it. But uh, there should be another one also. Okay. Other questions? Do, do you think this would survive if you fatten the tube a little bit? Uh, if, if instead of a filament you would have an epsilon 2, do you think 
this collision would survive. In, in which framework? Okay, so uh, of course that's what we are, why we are working on models. I expect this will work, but uh, uh, to, 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 to see, I mean, this model is supposed to be valid up to a distance between the filaments is much larger than the core size of the tubes. So, of course, game over at some point before this uh, beautiful picture happens, but, 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 but. Um, uh, Maida and Bertotti's book says that uh, it is seen uh, in a numerical simulation in, uh, in fluid dynamics equation that when, uh, when the you, you are at the balancing point where separation distance and core uh, uh, section are equivalent, then it, you will have a reconnection. No. If this model breaks, is there any model or...? No, I don't know. I really don't know and I um, don't think so. No. From free dynamics you just have numerics and uh, well, they... Uh, it should be interesting to see with this kind of, uh, of solution what will give us through numerics in free dynamics that, uh, that will take... I mean, I, you have to have supercomputers or whatever. I mean, it's not... Uh, Thank you. <laughs>